In this video, we're going to talk about how to multiply and divide simple decimal numbers without using a calculator, using only your head. Now you can confirm your answer with a calculator to make sure you got it right. But we're going to talk about how to do it without a calculator and also how to take a square root of a decimal number without a calculator. So let's go ahead and begin. How can we multiply 0 0.06 times 0 0.04 mentally? Well first, what is 6 times 4? You know that 6 times 4 is 24. Next, look at how many digits you have. In the first number, there are two digits to the right of the decimal point, and the same is true for the second number. When you're multiplying, add these two digits. 2 plus 2 is 4. So your final answer should contain four digits after the decimal point. And you need a 2 and 4 as well. So because 6 times 4 is 24, 0 0.06 times 0 0.04 is going to be 0 0.0024. You need to have a total of four digits to the right of the decimal. Now let's try another example. What is 0.8 multiplied by 0 0.07? Go ahead and try this one. So first, we know that 8 times 7 is 56. Now, let's look at the digits that we have. The first number has one digit to the right of the decimal point. The second number has two. One plus two is three. So our answer should have three digits to the right of the decimal point. So since 8 times 7 is 56, 0.8 times 0.07 is going to be 0 0.056. And as you can see, we have three digits to the right of the decimal point. So based on those two examples, go ahead and try these three. Multiply 0 0.6 times 0 0.8, 0 0.09 times 0.7, and also 0.12 times 0 0.005. Go ahead and try these three examples. Now we know that 6 times 8 is 48. So 0 0.6 times 0 0.8 is 0 0.48. Now let's check the digits. We have one digit in the first number to the right of the decimal point, and one as well. 1 plus 1 is 2, so the final answer should contain two digits. Now looking at the next number, 9 times 7 is 63. So 0 0.09 times 0 0.7, it turns out it's 0 0.063. Here we have two digits. Here we have one. Two plus one is equal to three. So we need a total of three digits in our answer. Now what about the last one? Twelve times five is sixty. The first number has two digits. The second one has three digits. Two plus three is five. So our answer has to contain five digits. So this is going to be point 0, 0, 0, 60. Make sure you have the extra 0 to the right of the 60 for this to work. Notice that we have a total of 5 digits. Now if you have a 0 at the end, you really don't need to write it, so you need to understand that this is equivalent to 0. 0. 0. 0.0006. It's the same. But first you want to write it this way, using the same rules, and then you can just rewrite it like that. But if you type it in your calculator, your calculator is going to show this answer. Now, what about dividing two numbers? What are the rules for this situation? Well, we know that 72 divided by 9 is 8, because 8 times 9 is 72. But what is 0 0.0072 divided by 0 0.09? Well, let's compare multiplication and division. When multiplying decimal numbers, you need to add the digits. When dividing decimal numbers, you need to subtract the digits. So looking at the top number, there's four digits. And the bottom number has two. Four minus two is equal to two. So therefore, your final answer should contain two digits. Since 72 divided by nine is eight, 0 0.0072 divided by 0 0.09 
is going to be 0 0.08 so that it has two digits to the right of the decimal. So let's try another example. Let's divide 0 0.054 by 0.6. Now 54 divided by 6 is 9. And on top we have three digits. On the bottom we only have one. 3 minus 1 is 2. So the final answer should have two digits. So this is going to be 0 0.09. So now it's your turn. Try these three. Feel free to pause the video as you work on these three examples. And here's the last one. So let's start with the first one. First, let's look at the digits on top there are five digits and on the bottom there's two five minus two is equal to three so the final answer should have three digits 18 divided by three is six so this is going to be point zero zero six now looking at the next one on top there are also uh, five digits on the bottom we have three digits to the right of the decimal and 5 minus 3 is 2. Now 144 divided by 12 is 12. So to have two digits is just going to be 0.12 or 0.12. And so that's the answer. And now for the last one, there are four digits on top and two on the bottom. 4 minus 2 is 2. Now 108 divided by 12 is 9. So this is going to be equal to 0 0.09. So that's how you can divide two decimal numbers. So far, we've considered situations in which the numerator had more digits to the right of the decimal point than the denominator. But what if they're the same, or what if the denominator has more? What's going to happen in that case? So for example, let's divide 0.12 by 0.03. So on the top, we can see that there's two digits to the right of the decimal point. And on the bottom, there's also two. Two minus two is zero. If you get zero or a negative number, add one to that number. Zero plus one is one. So what this means is that you're going to have one digit to the left of the decimal point. Twelve divided by three is four. So your answer is simply four. I'm going to put the decimal point here, or 4.0 if you want to leave it like that. So there's one digit to the left of the decimal point. Let's try some more examples. Now let's divide 0 0.08 by 0 0.002. So on top, we have two digits, and on the bottom, we have three. Two minus three is negative one. Now, we're going to add 1 to negative 1. However, we're not going to say negative 1 plus 1 is 0. We're going to treat this as if it's equal to a positive 1. So what we really need is the absolute value of negative 1, and just add 1 to it. So we're going to have two digits to the left of a decimal point. If you add negative 1 to 1, it's going to be 0, and you're not going to know what to do with that. Now, 8 divided by 2 is 4. So if we're going to have two digits to the left of the decimal point, and we need a 4, then the only way to write this is 40, or 40.0. 40 As you can see, we have two digits to the left of the decimal point. And if you type this in your calculator, it's going to give you 40. Let's try another example. Let's divide 0.36 by 0 0.0004. So there's two digits on top. As you can see, it's 1, 2. On the bottom, there's a total of 4. 
So 2 minus 4 is a negative number. If you get 0 or a negative number, make sure to add 1 to it. But treat negative 2 as if it's positive 2. Then add 1. Don't add 1 to negative 2. It's not going to work. So this tells us that we should have 3 digits to the left of the decimal point. Now, 36 divided by 4 is equal to 9. So how can we write a number that has a 9 and it has 3 digits to the left of a decimal point? Well, all you need to do is add some zeros to it. So it's going to be 9, 0, 0, and then decimal point. And as you can see, we have 3 to the left. 0.36 divided by 0 0.0004 is 900. So last example on this type of problem. So let's say if we have 0 0.042 divided by 0 0.0000014. Go ahead and try this example. So in the numerator of the fraction, we have three digits. And in the denominator, there are seven digits. 3 minus 7 is negative 4, but let's treat it as if it's positive 4, and then add 1. So that's 5. Now, 42 divided by 14, that's equal to 3. So we need 5 digits to the left of the decimal. So that's a 3 with 4 zeros, giving us a total of 5 digits on the left. So this is going to be 30,000. And if you type it in your calculator, 0 0.042 divided by 0 0.000014 is indeed 30,000. Now what about taking the square root of a decimal number? Let's say if we want to find the square root of 0 0.04. What rules can we employ to make this easier? How can we find the answer easily? So first, what is the square root of 4? The square root of 4 is 2 because 2 times 2 is 4. The index number of the square root is a 2. If you don't see a number, it's always assumed to be a 2. Now, here's what you need to do. Count the number of digits that are to the right of the decimal point. So notice that we have two digits. And what we're going to do is take the number of digits and divide it by the index number. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. Now when you divide it, you need to make sure that you get a whole number. If you get like a decimal, it's not going to work. So divide the number of digits that you have by 2, and your final answer should contain this many digits. So 0 0.04 has two digits, so the square root of 0 0.04 is going to be 0.2. So notice that it only has one digit to the right of the decimal point. Let's try this one, 0 0.0025. Now we know that the square root of 25 is 5, and is a total of 4 digits to the right. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. So when you multiply decimals, you need to add the digits. When you're dividing, you need to subtract the digits. When you're taking the square root, you need to divide the digits. So a final answer should have 2 digits to the right of the decimal point. So this answer is 0 0.05. Try these two. The square root of 0.36 and the square root of 0 0.0049. So 0.36 contain two digits and two divided by two is one. So the final answer should have one digit to the right of the decimal point. Now the square root of 0.36, well the square root of 36, let's do that first, that's equal to 6. So the square root of 0.36 is going to be 0.6, since this contains only one digit to the right. Now the square root of 49 is 7, and this number has 4 digits, so 4 divided by 2 is 2. So the final answer has to contain two digits. So this is going to be 0 0.07.
Go ahead and try these two. The square root of 0 0.000064. And also, let's try a much longer one. 0 0.000081. The square root of 64 is equal to 8. And here we have a total of 6 digits. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So the answer has to contain 3 digits to the right of the decimal point. So it's going to be 0 .008. Just add two zeros and the 8 as well. Now in the next number, we have a total of 8 digits. And if we divide it by 2, our answer should contain 4 digits. The square root of 81 is 9. So to have 4 digits, we need 3 zeros and then a 9. So 1, 2, 3, and here's a 9. So that's the answer, 0. 0.0009. Now what about cube roots? What is the cube root of 0. 0.008? What rules do we need to employ? Well, since the index number is a 3, we're going to divide the digits by 3. So therefore, the number of digits has to be a multiple of 3. We need to get a whole number when we divide it for this to work. So here we have 3 digits. 3 divided by 3 is 1. So the final answer should have only one digit to the right of the decimal point. Now what is the cube root of 8? What number times itself 3 times is 8? The cube root of 8 is 2 because 2 to the third power is 8. 2 times 2 times 2 3 times is 8. So if the cube root of 8 is 2, the cube root of 0 0.008 is going to be 0 0.2. It's going to have one digit to the right of the decimal point. So knowing that, try this example. What is the cube root? of point zero 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 two seven. So as we can see, there's a total of six digits. Six divided by three is two. And the cube root of twenty seven is three because three times three times three is twenty seven. So since the cube root of twenty seven is three, the final answer is going to be point zero three it's going to have two digits to the right of the decimal point. Now here's the last example for today. What is the cube root of 0 .0000000064? The cube root of 64 is 4 because 4 to the third power is 64. And in this example we have nine digits divided by three, the final answer should contain three. So the final answer is going to be 0 0.004. And that's it. So that concludes this video. Now, if you want to find more videos on math and science, check out my website, video-tutor.net. And you can find my playlist on algebra, trig, pre-cal, calculus, even chemistry and physics, and some other stuff as well. So thanks for watching and have a good day.